And it, it looks a little overwhelming, but it's actually um, pretty, pretty easy. So it's called grouping because you're going to put the four terms into two separate groups, right? So step one, is to put the polynomial into two groups. So I show that by putting like a little, I don't know what you would call this, like a little, kind of like an upside down bracket, I guess, um, just to show that I have group one and group two. And then the second step is to factor out the GCF from each group. when you look at that first group, what would be my greatest common factor that I can take out of both terms? X squared. X squared. So I'm going to have X squared times, and then remember I asked myself, X squared times what will give me 5X to the third? So I'm going to have 5X. X squared times what would give me negative X squared? Minus 1. And then my greatest common factor for the second group? Three. Yep. So I'm going to have 3 times. And then I'm going to have 3 times what gives me 15x. Well, that's going to be 5x. And 3 times what gives me negative 3? Minus, minus 1. So right away, you should notice something about these two things that I just grouped. What do you notice about the quantities? The same. Yes. OK. The quantities in parentheses should match. If they don't match, then there's a problem, right? So I have 5x minus 1, and I have 5x minus 1. That's how I know I'm on the right track. And then step three is to regroup. So I'm going to rewrite this again. Now, just like when we did the AC method, you're not going to rewrite all of these steps every single time. You just like work through it. The two values that you factored out as greatest common factor, those now become a quantity. So I have x squared plus 3 times the quantity 5x minus 1. And that will be my answer. How can I check this? Foil. I could FOIL it, right? So 5x times x squared would give me 5x to the third. So that's first. Outer, x squared times negative 1 would give me negative x squared. Inner, I would get 15x. And last would be negative 3. Right? So again, when you FOIL it, you want to get back to where you started the original um, polynomial. Dylan, do you have a question? Yep, I took out x squared. Yep. 
because they minus each other. well they both have at least an x and that's the smallest degree yep okay so let's practice a couple more so i'm going to go on to my next page Yep. So every once in a while I like to point out like that I might be a little OCD. And this is when I did the notes last year. The exact same? Uh, exact same day. I might have a problem. And Wednesday? Well, it's Wednesday <laughs> this year, but it was yeah. the exact same day. Yeah. I might have a problem. Oh, but hey, wait, put G on. Is that what you were copying on? Yeah, so like I make notes every year, and if I make changes, I keep it for the next year, and I throw out the notes from the previous year. It's like a cycle. And so like I'll keep this year's notes and throw out last year's notes. But How many years have you keep that same question? I don't know. That's a good I mean, I have all the binders and since I started doing this up in my cabinet. I don't know. It used to just be a spiral, but now we keep like a spiral notebook, but now we keep a binder. So. But I don't, I don't like to change much, as you can tell. Okay, second example. Okay, so remember step one is to put them into two groups. So then I'm gonna look at this first group and say what is the greatest common factor of this first group? What is it? 8x squared? Did I hear an 8x squared? Yeah. Yeah. So 8x squared, and it's going to be times x minus 8. Right? It does not. So if there's not, if there's not a coefficient or an obvious common factor, um, you still have to take something out to complete the first quantity. So we're going to take a positive 1, and then it's just going to be x minus 8, because these still have to match, right? Yeah. But I need to have something to finish up the first quantity. So if there's not an obvious thing that would be able to be pulled out as a greatest common factor, you take out the 1. So my answer is going to be 8x squared plus 1 times x minus 8. I can't just have 8x in this quantity, ax squared. Like, that would not FOIL correctly. So you have to remember to sometimes take out a 1 to finish up that quantity. You would figure it out pretty quickly if you tried to FOIL. You'd be like, there's, there's something missing, right? I don't have a second term here. And so this last one is going to put everything together. So go ahead and copy this down and then we'll talk about it. <laughs> so some of you may have noticed right away that this actual polynomial has its own greatest common factor before I even group it. It would be three. Yep. So I'm going to take three out, and then I'm going to come up with four terms. Then I'm going to group those, okay? So I'm going to have 7x to the third minus 28x squared plus 5x minus 20. 
So this 3, just like when we did greatest common factor yesterday, will just become part of my answer. I can't forget about it. But then I'm just going to go ahead and ignore it for right now and make my groups. So what would be my greatest common factor of 7x to the third minus 28? 7x squared. And I'm going to have x minus 4. And then I would take out 5 times x minus 4. So we're going to have 7x squared plus 5 times x minus 4. And then we have this 3 hanging out as part of the answer as well. Um, because I took the 5 out of here, right? So this creates this quantity here. Now, sometimes, and I think there's an example like it maybe on the study guide, you have to take a negative value out so that the two quantities match. And when you do that, then you would just have minus right here instead of plus. Okay. How do we feel about grouping method? It's not terrible, right? Yep. Could be worse. Could be worse. <laughs> <laughs>